Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your boy, Dolphamingo. Get ready, guys. This is going to be a very, very spicy birdcase variant in which I'm going to show you guys the ins and outs of how this deck can work, let alone some of these matchups and stuff, how to deal with certain matchups as well. We'll talk about Gecko Moria today, and we'll talk about Perona, and we'll talk about Yamato and Reju. And how to deal with these certain decks. I don't think... I actually don't think we ran into a Reju here, so I apologize. But we will get into how to deal with that as well. It was pretty simplistic, let's be honest. It's kind of like playing into Bella Betty a little bit. But in any case, we'll talk about the, the big two here. With Perona, Gekko Moria, and Yamato. Big three, I'm sorry. But first of all, let's go over the deck. And what we got going on here. If you guys want to stay for the deck text when it comes to playing this into other decks, feel free. But for right now, we're going to go over the deck, then we're going to talk about some matchups, and then we're going to get into games. So pick your poison. This might be a little bit of a longer intro, so I'm going to try my best. Now, what you see here is 43 out of 51 cards, right? I wanted to show you guys the shell of what we're going to be working with when it comes to Birdcage right now for OPO6, in my opinion. You guys know I play a lot of Dofi. I will be putting out different variations of Birdcage when I figure out new uh, synergies and all that sort of thing. But for right now, this is what we're going to be doing here. So, the shell looks something like this. We added in the Hody Jones, we got rid of some other cards to make, make sure I can make room and get this card to, to do his thing consistently. I am still going to stick with the kid, and I am going to still stick with the A-Drop kid. But we'll talk about that real quick. So, Perona is coming out, right? And kid is also going up. Kid is being used in Yamato, Perona, Doflamingo here, Uta. He's everywhere. He does a very good job at doing what he does best, and that's guarding you, right? You will see this man pretty much in every deck at Locals that has access to green. He's very strong. There's generally not many options to remove him unless you are playing, you know, Sakazuki. And we all saw what happened to him recently. It doesn't apply to us just yet, but we'll see, we'll see what goes on. In any case, the, hev the heavy decks that can remove this guy will be your Perona, generally your Sakazuki, and a mono blue crocodile, or a blue of some sort, such as Queen can deal with this, right? So yeah, keep in mind, Red Rock's a thing, Ice Age is a thing, Ice Age into an x Drake is a thing, but that's how he is generally dealt with. But in any case, he does a very good job protecting you. Now, the reason why I like to include him into this list with Birdcage is two things. First of all, he blocks well, very well for you. You have your events to protect him quite easily. You have your 2k counters. He does super good in birdcage decks, right? You also have Flap Threat. Flap Threat would make your, your ACOS kid at 10k for the whole turn, which is very, very strong. And he also cheats out cards for you. Be it that he'll be cheating out sugars for free from hands, and he'll be treat, cheating out other cards as well that you can use in this deck. Now, when it comes to the 7-drop kid, why we still keep this in here, this card is still going to be staple no matter what on how you play this deck when it comes to Birdcage. This is a card you, you have to see at least once a game. If not, your Birdcage is not going to last as long as it normally would. If you see this as once a game, or maybe stays on board for once a turn or two times or what have you, you're good to go. But this guy allows your, your leader to be 6k, right? which is very good on, on the defensive end and on the attacking end. On the defensing end, your leader becomes an 8k for the whole turn. And how is that possible? If you don't have your useless kid on board, okay, you have access to Flap Threat. If you have kid on board, you still have access to this card, but I'm saying in general, Flap Threat on top of your leader with this kid on board makes you an 8k for the whole turn. So in other words, with Flap Threat, with some sort of this combination here, you are very hard to deal with and get around for most decks to deal with right now in this format. It is very spooky. And then, of course, we are running Hody Jones. Now, without further ado, this is a brand new card that comes from OPO6, and I highly recommend you guys to try this guy out in Birdcage variant Do Flamingo. This is a very scary card, and you will see this in a lot of decks as well. Some Perona decks will run this. I know it's a little crazy, but some, some will. And you'll run into this with Yamato as well, and some older green decks, which will come back in this metagame, hopefully, in OPO6. But Hody, inside a Birdcage variant, you're resting those bodies that your opponent didn't want to block with. 
So you are resting those Sabos, those Borsalinos. You're resting those Ohms. A lot of cards that your opponent didn't want to attack into due to Birdcage, Hody got you. And it's really, really good considering the fact that if you can extend this card for one or two turns with Kid, Hody rests them permanently at that point. Outside of, you know, the big bodies, right? Outside of anything higher than six drops, right? Because this only locks down five. But with that being said, he's very good at what he can do. Now, when it comes to the bigger units, of course, we deal with them by chaining Doflamingos back to back to back. We already know that. So we're not really too spooked when it comes to things that are higher than six. Because Birdcage locks down all the blockers and Doflamingo can deal with the big bodies if need be. But overall, this is going to be the shell and what we're working with. I will show you guys a variant in which that I've been playing around with with Birdcage. Let's see here. Yeah, I know. I do this a lot. I am sorry. So here is my new shell when it comes to Doflamingo, the whole deck right now. And there will be some changes throughout the video. And when I do do some changes here, you will notice that I don't, at some point, I don't run Treble. And I don't run uh, Billion Fold and law but we'll talk about it real quick before we dive into these games here so when it comes to monet i always include monet in my decks if i'm running a cost kit specifically considering the fact that kid can cheat these out for free and she also allows you to lock down cards with birdcage now do keep in mind monet into this deck perona is not always the best but in any case, before we start talking about this, if you want to skip over this and dive into the games, feel free. This is the deck list in which we are going to be currently using. If you want to stay for the analysis between Moria and Perona, how to deal with those, thank you very much. But either way, without further ado, in any case, when you play down a Monet with a leader effect of Kid or just playing it out in general into this deck, it's never a good idea. The same thing with Sugar. Never a good idea. And that's simply because Perona allows her leader effect to rest a unit, right? That's four costs or less. So she can simply just rest Monet, she can rest the sugar, and attack into it. So that's something you have to consider before you just willy-nilly play these cards down. And I think a lot of players in OPO6 here who decide to play some variant of, of Birdcage will get very conflicted on this deck being good, or get very uh, conflicted on how to deal with certain matchups. You have to be careful with this card's leader effect. Now, there's a card here in which we're all familiar with, such as this law right here. Generally speaking, phenomenal card, very good card. But I've noticed, and you'll notice as well, as I adapt, adapt my list and I change my list around, that I slowly take this card out of my deck Currently, the games that we are going to play today, he is included because he does do a lot of things for the deck, be it he's a blocker, he minus his Dawn for you. But I've learned that playing with this card kind of favors certain matchups more so than, than helps yourself. In every match that's not a Perona, in every match that's not a Sakazuki, in every match that's not a Gekko Moria, this guy is amazing. Absolutely amazing because he discards cards, right? Well, with those three matches that I just mentioned, they're playing out of the trash anyway. Which is terrible, considering the fact that you're setting up the trash for them by discarding cards. You know what I mean? So it's just like, mm, it feels a little bit like a double edge. But, into like Katakuri, into like Anel, this is phenomenal. And you will see Katakuri and Anel all, all over the place, let, let's be honest. So if you want to keep this into the deck, you definitely can. It doesn't hurt you in that regard, just know you're not going to get a lot of value with Law into something like Gekko Moria into Sakazuki into some Perona decks as well. But he's very, very good for what he can do. Newer inclusions that we also added here are a billion fold. This is a brand new card that comes out in OPO6, which is very, very solid. I've been playing around with this for a while, not just for these games, for the video or what have you. I personally enjoy this card, but again, it's gonna be something that I might consider taking out at the end of the day when I decide to you know do changes to the deck simply for one reason and one reason only it's not searchable and i think i'd rather use blast breath personally over billion fold and it has its uses it goes up to 4k right blast breath already does that for you and it minus it's done it extends birdcage a little bit which is nice 
this doesn't do all that, this truly comes into play when you have eight Dawn. So it's kind of like a radical beam. But in this sense, Blast Breath isn't searchable. But Blast Breath has another reason for use is to extend the birdcage, which is great. Whereas this here, this isn't a searchable card. And often not when you're using Baby 5 to look for a birdcage or using Baby 5 to look for a Doflamingo or Sugar or what have you, you might have to pass up on these. And considering we're only running two, it's very unlikely that you're going to get a lot of value out of them. Just like you won't get a lot of value out of some of these other cards you might ask, you might say, right? But these are searchable. This is not. And that's my that's my stand on this right now. I do think it's a good card. And the fact that it's not a Dress Rosa, like, it hurts it a little bit. Or, sorry, uh, Don, Don Quixote. My bad. But, other than that, it does a good job of keeping you alive. That's for sure. It's just really hard to add cards in here for space. So I can't really justify adding more of these versus something else. Like, if I had the option, it would be Blast Breath or our other favorite card for this deck right now. And everyone should know about this. If you don't know it, you should give it a shot. Hell's Judgment. But between those three, that, that's really what it's going to be. Now, there's another card in which I generally enjoy into Doflamingo. And I think everybody knows, you know, Spiderweb is very, very sh strong at what it does, right? This is a very strong card. So, we'll be diving into the final variation of the list. Of course, we might, we might be including Spiderweb. We'll talk about it once we get there. But overall... This is my current list and what we're working with right now when it comes to Birdcage. I want you guys to give this one a shot, let me know what you think about it, and I will talk about my further adjustments at the end of the video as I always do. But without further ado, let's dive into some games here. I'll see you guys in a split second. Now before we get into today's games, I do want to go ahead and say thank you to ACG Town for sponsoring this video. This is one of the places where I come to to look at certain anime and when it comes to like apparel and all that sort of thing, this is one of the websites It's actually pretty solid. They have some decent prices, let alone there's their sales all the time for all of your favorite animes out there. One Piece from Demon Slayer to Honkai Star Rail. Not an anime, but it's something that everyone out there is playing right now. Genshin Impact, Jujutsu Kaisen. There's a lot of stuff here from Bleach, Fairy Tale, all that sort of stuff. They do clothing, apparel, all sorts of apparel from 3D printed hoodies, which are actually really, really good. And we're not talking about like those generic hoodies or t-shirts you find inside of the mall that has just, you know, a random anime picture on it. No, no, no. These actually look really, really good, man. These look pretty fire. For those of you guys out there that work out and stuff and are interested in shorts, I picked up a pair of these recently, and they they have that, that double layer aspect to them. I know it's something simple, and when it comes to phone cases, they range from a wide of different animes and mobile games and stuff, such as Honkai, Star Rail, Genshin Impact, all of that. But overall, give this place a shot. Let me know what you think about it. Now, I don't know if you guys have played this matchup yet when it comes to Birdcage into an Uta, but Uta is going to be quite strong in OP06, so do keep that in mind. And I believe, unfortunately, some of these decks might be using EB01 cards, and it's not much I can do. I can't control that, you know what I mean? So we will have to try to work around it and do our best, because, you know, Bl Bluno, EB01, eh, we'll see how it goes, though. But I will tell you, with how popular this deck is, you will see her a lot at your locals, unfortunately. But just know, it's it's not an issue, really. Even though Uta is so good at what she does, she's very aggressive, she's very strong, I'll give it to you. But Birdcage locks down everything here that she can do. And the fact that she doesn't have any removal for our big body units, you know what I mean? Like our, our kids... Both kids are no flamingo. We're good to go, boys. But with that being said, it's a lot of pressure you guys have to deal with in the early game. If you guys don't see birdcage, so do keep that in mind. You're not always going to find birdcage. We know this. Most of the time, you will, nine out of ten. We'll see how she wants to play this match. We do have a very, very good hand. We have the birdcage on curve here as well. We have sugar down already on board, so we get the rest of Nami. Unfortunately, we probably will lose the sugar here. Okay. Never mind. I lied. We'll just draw another sugar. No big deal. We got a flap thread early. Alright, let's go and drop down Birdcage. We'll pass it up. I think she's got 
uh, eight cards in hand. So this could be much of a problem. If we can find a law here, this would be really, really good. Law into this matchup is pretty detrimental to most Utha decks, to be fair. But considering the fact that Nami cannot give her cards anymore, why would you... Okay. Now, Uta can restand herself, though. I do gotta keep that in mind. Kinda forgot about that. She can kinda restand units, so we have to deal with that card as soon as possible now. And all she has to do is throw away an event from hand to restand another film unit, so we have to remove the Uta. Backlight. Why didn't you just attack into it? So just wasting that. Seems a little silly to me, but you know, eats the road. We'll counter out of this. It's fine. Baby Five is just chilling. I don't really need her right now, to be honest. We have all the cards in hand that we actually need right now. And if I decide the Baby Five, it's a possibility that we see an A drop kid. You know. But we'll see. Okay, that's not too bad. We gotta play your boy down on curb. But let's let's do the thing. It's minus a dawn. Send bird cage. Go six K into the the the, uh, the the leader over here again. Because the other Uta is locked down. I'd rather him just get rid of a card in hand. That way he has to forcibly do that, you know? Instead of me wasting an attack on it. Goes with a 7. That's fine, I guess. Six cards left. She is not in a good spot right now, to be honest. Birdcage is just doing so much work for you. And without the Sakazuki matchup everywhere, I'm trying to tell you guys, a lot of these older decks and a lot of these newer decks that get stuff in OP06, they're going to come back, man. Especially when a when a deck that was checking every other deck in the format, Sakazuki is not played as much as he was before, you have a good chance playing older decks that get new tools to actually do something, which is nice. I think he, he did play Nami effect. Got himself another chopper here. Plays down to Usopp. Okay, cool. That's fine. Go six. We'll take the hit. And we get Hody Jones. Perfect. Because now we can just rest the Usopp and the Nami with Hody Jones here. I don't really care about taking a you know a life card. It's not really too big of a deal. It's only a problem if we don't get a blocker down on board. Considering the fact that um, I'm Invincible exists, you know? Nice. Speaking of which. Alright, so let's drop Hody Jones. Rest both of these. We'll take the life here. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Usopp I don't care too much about because she wants to attack with it. We'll just lock it down with Birdcage. The other two we have to remove. So, we'll attack in with Kid. We'll use the Dawn thing to extend the Birdcage. Again, I probably sh you should probably should clear the blocker Uta, but it's up to you in this scenario. Birdcage can do it at some point if you choose to let it happen, or they can keep pitching cards from hand to restand another unit, which is probably the better play because you're getting rid of cards. And we just go for face. Because in this sense, you know they don't have any Dawn active, so they don't have any events you have to worry about in that regard. And throwing away all these bo small body units, they have to get rid of these two Ks to survive here. Luffy hasn't come down yet either, which is really, really good for us. Not that he matters against this deck, but you know, each their own. Just ready for I'm Invincible to pop down. Which right now would be a. Uh, eh, no, I think we'd be eight, even with that. Because we go up to 8k with uh, Flap Thread. So we'll be fine. One life left as well. 31 cards in deck. Alright, so what are you doing here? Speaking of Luffy. Luffy plays down our blocker, maybe? Or you got nothing? Okay, so Zoro comes down instead. Alright. That can be a problem, but uh, I think I think we'll be fine. Four cards in hands, three life left. We're looking pretty good. 
our board is set up in a way where she has to clear it. So I think if she does anything other than try to attack into something in the following turn, she's probably doing it wrong. I, but, but why? It's interesting because even at locals, people do things like this to me all the time. Where they'll attack in the baby five with birdcage active, and there's no point. I'm not gonna be able to restand her unless I play a spider web, right? She can't activate her effect when she's rested. Just leave it be. The nine here, five in hands. What do I want to do? I am worried about her getting it. I'm invincible, so we might need to deal with that at some point. But let's go ahead and rest the Zoro first. We have seven Don active. I think we're going to need a Diamante or a Law at the very least here. I think this will work. Let's go 9k to face. We'll do the Dawn thing. If she wants to block with Luffy, she needs a 2k or a 3k, sorry. This might just be a hit. Nice. 7... Six. Let's just go eight here. This will be fine. Now just remember, if she does decide to do that with Luffy, I cannot attack into it. It's just not smart to do that. Okay, there's Sanji and the Zoro. Okay, got something else. Need one more. Okay. Let's go seven to face. She takes that one. That's crazy. I'm not sure why she did that, but she did that. Five done left. We'll throw down a Diamante here. And we'll pass it up. So, with the two Don active, of course, we have enough Don to play down the flap thread to make myself an 8k for the whole turn which is going to stop her from being able to kill me with I'm Invincible. Even so, we have a Diamante here, so. Brooke, okay. What's the point though? So I think you would have to win on this turn. Arrest the Luffy. That seems a little silly. Right? She'd have to go all out there on that turn. So realistically, let's say she didn't play those units down. That was four Don she used to play the Brook. That four Don could have been used on herself. So that could have been a 12k attack here. And this could have been another 12k attack. Okay, never mind. I guess it doesn't matter realistically because we could just block that with Diamante for one of those hits. And then we could have blocked out with the. Uh, yeah, okay, never mind. Either way, even if she didn't play those units down, I, th I think it wouldn't have mattered. Especially when it comes to power wise. We have enough counter in hand with a blocker still on board, so we're good to go. And I'm gonna. We just go face, right? Get in there, Hoodie. He's doing such a good job. But it's all good though. We'll dive into another game. Coming at you guys with Birdcage Do Flamingo playing into a red purple law, in which definitely gonna be a problem in this metagame. Not specifically for you know this deck, just overall. If you're a Reju fan, good luck. Cause this deck is gonna give you a very, very hard time. But other than that. It's not too bad. We can deal with this. Now, I have learned playing Birdcage Del Flamingo into Red Purple Law here, whether it's from OP05 or OP06, it's the same concept that I've learned. Most of them will run the Max and they'll run the Gordon. And they'll get. They have a lot of removal now. I mean, a lot of removal tools. So, my hand's not the greatest. Like, I'll give you that. But. 
we can still drop law here and actually get some value although we know that we're going to give this man fuel because he's just going to remove this and get a free body on board it, it is what it is and this is why i'm not going to be playing a lot of bodies down on board that way he doesn't have a lot of options to just get free cards i know that sounds a little silly but most laws were just minus three just to play something if they can't do anything else which is pretty bad and he goes down in hand size quite quickly by doing things like this so we have birdcage here for this variant right what i'm gonna do of course try to take as many of these hits as i possibly can without putting myself at risk of letting him win once he rests enough cards we'll drop a birdcage and we'll go about the day so punk gibson might as well punk the the pepo we can't do anything about the other law for right now, but we can guard out for this leader swing if need be. I'd rather just go ahead and do it, get rid of the billion fold, move on to deck. Alright, so we're at 6 dawn. We will go 6k here to face. He's got 4 cards in hand. I imagine he lets this go through. She needs cards. Okay, alright, never mind. Let's play Birdcage to pass it up. So now, realistically, we have to deal with two swings, for now. And so I find myself like a Diamante or a Kid. Oof. I mean, I guess, thank you, but that's a big one, boys. Alright, so we get another law off that, which is nice, because it's another blocker. Oh, that sucks. Never mind, I lied. There goes Dofi and Law. Hmm. I guess we gotta take this hit too. Alright, so we get the Monet as well. He has two Dawn active, or two Dawn left. But he's got two life here. How do we play this out real quick? Alright, so we play Sugar to rest the law. So that's one less attack that he has. That he has. We do have Billion Fold. We also have Hody Jones. If we Hody Jones, we rest the law anyway. This allows me to keep the sugar in hand, right? Just for a 1k counter. And we should be able to win on the following turn. We get two Dawn reactive here, so we can actually use Billion Fold and be fine. Does he have the counter here? Okay, he did. That's fine. So realistically, Law is only swinging in at 9k this turn, and we have the counter in hand, so we should be fine be able to win the next turn. Unless he has Zoro here. Then we're in a bit of a pickle. But... Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, Reju. Alright, well, anyway... That was a little bit close, and we did have a bad hand this turn around. We did have a bad hand, let's be honest. We got no bodies at, at all, which you might think is a good thing, but you still need to have bodies on board to get little blocks off to make this man forced to use cards. We didn't see a lot of Gordons here. We didn't see a lot of minus scene effects other than the laws. So it might have turned out a little bit differently if we actually had bodies. But I digress. It, it, it's still a very easy matchup, to be honest, with Birdcage Del Flamingo. Good game, bud. Hmm, speaking of Perona, everybody's favorite deck. I can't wait, actually. OPO6 is going to be so much fun, boys and girls. So many cool decks running around that I'm going to be playing, that you're going to be playing, we're going to see at Locals. This is going to be great. 10 out of 10. But in any case, this is going to be a really tough matchup for her, necessarily. At least, like... I feel Perona is, is super easy to deal with. Like, I really do. I don't know what it is. Just because we play Birdcage? Maybe. I don't know. But, eh. We'll see. Let's go 7k to face. We already got the Birdcage right off the bat. Even without the Baby 5 effect that was on top deck. So, we're alright. Why don't you, uh, Dawn up and hit me? That'd be great. No? Alright. Fair enough. We get a Sugar. Hmm. So I will tell you, in these matchups here, when I play against Perona, I try to be as aggressive as I possibly can. I'm always going for face. I'm never worrying about board. Ever. 
I'm not attacking into any other unit they decide to play down. I'm always going for face. Because again, guys, Birdcage will lock down everything in this matchup besides Gecko Moria. Alright, so you don't have to worry about it. We got no we have no uh events here so far, which does suck though. It's nice we got two kids in hand, but we do need some of our events here. Punk Gibson would be kinda useful, to be fair. We get a treble though, treble's not too bad. Let's go drop Hody Jones, rest both of them. I know we lose a life for doing it, but it doesn't necessarily matter too much because we get the life in hand, so it doesn't go to trash. And sometimes those are events, so. Let's go ahead and go 8k to face. Looking good, boys. Looking good. She has one attack here with leader. So don't play rest units. She really probably should deal with our Hoodie Jones. Otherwise, she's going to take a lot of damage next turn. Okay. Saru and leader effect. Not bad. That card is so good, by the way, Ryuma. Oh my gosh. Imagine they print something like that for any other color. If that was in yellow, that would be disgusting. But it's all good. We're doing good. 6k, we'll take that. And the Rosinante. Okay, so we have, we have the sugar here. And, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop a kid. And then we're going to force out a sugar with kid's ability, breast the Ryuma. And I think we'll be fine. Because that way it'll be locked down with bird gauge. Let's go 5k to face first. See if she opts to give me a card or not. She does. Okay. We'll take the sub up. Alright. Let's cheat out the sugar. Or rest the Ryuma. We'll attach Dawn and pass turn. Now remember. We're at 9 Dawn currently. So no matter what happens, we probably have to drop the 7 cost kid the following turn to extend the birdcage up. And hopefully she tries to use her resources on kid to remove that. But we'll see. She did rest the, the sugar with her leader effect. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter if sugar is rested or not. We will still rest any unit she decides to play on board here. But she probably should attack into it first or remove sugar first before she plays anything. I doubt she does that though. She might be a silly goober, I don't know. Yeah, she's a silly goober. We got there, boys. Alright, so we will rest the Rosinante here. I know that sounds silly, but he does have, you know, attack power if she decided to, you know, attack into the sugar with him, I'd be a little bit upset. Let's rest him instead. It's just, some people, like, I know it doesn't state that on the card, so it's probably very confusing for a lot of us. And I'll, I'll probably give everybody that in that regard. If you don't play Birdcage Dofi, you don't play Doflamingo, you don't play with Sugar, you don't know. That Sugar always will rest something, even though she's rested. Which is crazy. Her effect is never turned off. All right, so now we, we've seen an x trick and I'm feeling a little confident. Let's go 5k to face. We've seen an x trick in a Ryuma. I have yet to see an Ice Age, so it's a possibility she has one in hand. But if so, she'll need an Ice Age and a Ryuma, or an Ice Age and an x trick to pop down my kid here. Hmm. We don't have anything to play from hand to play down other than Monet. Now, I know that's silly, but we will be playing Monet as well. I'm not going to don the kid. We're just going to attack for 8k. I'm safe enough for her to not be able to get through me. And if she decides to, x trick will be rested with Birdcage. So we just go 8. We'll drop another kid. We'll do the thing. And we'll play a Monet for free. I know I probably should have played the kid first, like realistically. I probably should have been the you know the play there, but I was hoping to just get cards from hand. Which we did, we got there. 
Now, I think she'll rest the... Yep, okay. Now, the good thing about this is, even though she's rested, I don't care. She's going to act as a pseudo-blocker here. I guarantee it. Because if she doesn't, Monet's effect can hopefully be activated next turn, but we'll see. Oh, she's going for the kid. Alright, so kid's dead, unfortunately. It's so weird how these interactions work, especially on Sim. You know what I mean? In, in person, it's so much easier to understand what just happened. Considering she played the Gekko Moria, she got back a Saru from Trash for free, minusing the cost. But, in any case, both of them are gone. Monet did her thing. She blocked the unit for me, so I appreciate it. I'd assume x Drake wouldn't attack here, but if she doesn't attack, she's not going to, you know, take the life away. All right, cool. She decided not to. And we get another kid. How much you want to bet this is going to set her over the edge? Just dropping a second kid down. Four cards in hand. There's no way she has anything to deal with this right now. Let's just do the thing. Let's get it rested. Let's attach the dawn. And uh, let's go for face. Imagine playing a control deck and never being in control. That's insane. Uh, math is hard. Okay. Alright, so she did have the counter. She just didn't counter it. I don't know. That was weird. She definitely had the counter there. So, so I guess either way, one of those attacks would have went through. Regardless of how she decided to play that. But I think she just misclicked there. She still would not have a life right now. All right, let's do this. We'll get rid of uh, the treble. Go up to 11, play flap thread, go up to 13, and a diamante. This will make me 10k for the turn. So the only way she clears this is putting all of her dawn on the kid. Like all of the dawn. Nice. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Diving into another one. I'll tell you, after this game, we'll probably play one more, give or take. And I'm going to show you a different variation of Bill Flamingo in which it'll consist of my changes that I've made throughout my testing. So in other words, my final version of this version. Of course, there's going to be a lot of other variations to Birdcage coming throughout the channel when I discover new combinations, new cards, and all that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of new decks in OP06 that will further change how you play certain builds, certain decks, and all that thing. So older cards that you probably aren't considering will come back in relevancy as well. I'm not going to spoil it too much. I mean, I guess you can skip to the end of the video if you want to, you know, you want to be spoiled if it is what it is. But, uh... We're going to finish this one and do one more, and I'll come back at the end of that with the deck tech, as usual. But it looks like we're unlucky today, man. Double baby five searches, no birdcage. This is a very, I don't want to say easy matchup. Dep it, it depends on what type of build that uh, Yamato is running, right? If Yamato is playing a more green-based situation it's so easy to contend with because a lot of the units there are just low cost and they're very easy to rest with birdcage due to the fact of like baby five and bonnie searchers and all the like the small bodies and stuff the yellow is a little bit more explosive considering the fact that they can stack their life right she could put onami on top which is a very huge problem especially because it, it can just pop your Diamante can pop a lot of cards, key pieces in the early game. It's not something you want to see. And you have to guard out heavy in the early game versus Yamato. Until you can get Birdcage and then a blocker on board. Then you're, you're good. You're good to go at that point. But even right now, like I, I, I got to keep these baby fives alive because I need to find a Birdcage. Please. Bro. We'll take the sugar, I guess. I mean, the sugar and or the diamante would be pretty good here, but it might also be valuable to just not take anything other than those. Oh my goodness.
Would a second sugar hurt me? Probably not. But uh, let's take it anyway. Well, do we clear board here or go for face? Clearing board is probably the better ordeal, considering he can just swing into a baby five here as well. Throw down a sugar, we'll pass it up. I didn't want to attack the leader just in case that was going to be like a, a trigger to hit the board. This way he's only able to clear at least one baby five here. Unless he impacts the other one or whatever, but or Thunderbolts. Some some run a different set of builds, you know, let's be honest. Or plays Kadatsu. But we need one of these baby fives to live. It's a lot of cards he's got in hand here as well. Okay, so we'll rest the, the Kikyo. And there's no shot he doesn't go for face, right? Tori. Got another 2k counter. Come on, five to face. You know you wanna. Oh, okay, for sugar. Sure, you got it. That's fine, I'll just play another one. You know I got two. Alright, can we please get there? I swear, they're in here somewhere. What is that, 15 cards? No, sorry, that is... Because you start off with five in hand, so that's 20 cards we've seen so far. This never happens, let's be fair. Uh, we'll take this. It's another blocker we can have in the early game here. If we get it now, I think it's a little bit too late unless we see a kid. Double, there they are, really? <laughs> two searchers and then two bird cages on top of each other. That's wild. Alright, let's get this down. We'll pass it up. I don't want to attack, just like I said, just in case. We're chilling right now, boys. We're chilling. I'm not necessarily worried about her attacking me. She can have the baby fives now. That's fine. They've served their purpose. And all of those searches, by the way, I don't remember if we saw a seven cost kid, which is great because that means he's coming up here soon. And if that's the case, we definitely will have this game. As long as we have something to extend Birdcage. Or if we see a law. I didn't see a law either. Or maybe we did see a law. I just don't remember. This law would be pretty good here as well. Discarding cards from hand and prolonging the cage for a little bit. Okay. I assume the Kikyo, right? Or no? Does she have another one? Potentially an Onami maybe? I'm always worried about dealing with that card. So that means we'll just control board for now. We'll starve out the Yamato for a little bit. Oh, okay, smart. I love this list, by the way. Wano Yamato is just so good. All I'm running into is like um, the Supernova variant. You know, all the Baby Five Searchers, the Bonnie Searchers. I'm running into those everywhere. I don't feel it's as, as explosive as the yellow variant, so this is really cool playing against one of these as well. I need to find a kid, but it might be a little risky. Considering the amount of cards they have in hand, it's a potential that he might have a Onami as well, so yeah, you can have this one. Okay, so we get a Punk Gibson, which isn't bad, but it's not what we need here. Now we could potentially pop the uh, the Kikyo, and it won't get any value considering I'm at three li or four life. That's something that we could do. It just doesn't really matter all too much because it's locked down with Birdcage. You know what I mean? So in that regard, it's probably better to get a blocker down and a big body blocker. Let's go attacking first, though. Let's go six here. Just in case, if that is an Onami, we don't really care too much if he pops the, uh... Hey, let's go, boys! See? Play around it. We got there. Alright. So we definitely need blockers here. I don't think Momonosuke is going to attack at all. So, Diamante could be pretty good. We got Punk Gibson already. We'll play down a Monet as well and pass it up. With Tudon active, we can rest whatever he decides to put on board. 
You know, that's four or less, of course. And our hand is not looking the greatest. Okay. So Diamante is gone. Right? Why are you hesitating? Monet. Is Monet really, like, all threatening to you? You don't have any four costs on board, so... I guess it's more so worried about me resting four costs, and that way they're permanent rested with Birdcage, and maybe that's what it is. If he goes six... I can't rest anything with Punk Gibson, so... If only. Yeah. Nice. We're in business. And get another punk. Okay. So we get the kid down. We're gonna have to starve him out and make sure we uh you know we chain Dofies back to back if we can get another Doflamingo. So we go up to 6k here, we minus one Dawn, so Birdcage is now indefinite in play. Considering that yellow doesn't have any hard removal outside of, you know, Katakuri, really. Impact and Thunderbolt and Gendetsu if need be, but, you know, we're, we're fine. We'll go 7 here. We got rid of the Onami earlier. And Onami can't really touch me now. Unless he pops another one to kill the Diamante here, but we should be okay. We'll just go 6k. This way we're able to hold up two Punk Gibsons and have the zero cost event as well. That way we can discard a treble if need be. Oh, okay, so he thought I was a 5k. I guess he didn't pay attention to the plus one from the uh, the kid there. Get down to Sugar and pass it up. So a Punk will put me up to 10k. And then we have the zero cost event as well. Nice. Let me rest. Hear me out. Let me cook. Let me rest a five drop. Just because, okay, look, look, the seven, the nine, and the three, we're good with our hand. We can protect ourselves and be fine. If we rest the five here, we can go potentially go for game during our next turn. At least that's my game plan. It might have been silly, but hold up, let me cook. We got this. Okay, so nine to face. Hmm. He's gonna go seven, so we'll take this hit. 7th leader, my bad. We can guard out the Anel with Punk if we need to. I'm trying to save the Diamante from not having to, you know, take a hit and or die here. Okay. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Um, we take it then, right? Because we can just guard out his leader swing. Yep. We're good, boys. We got there. Oof. I'm sorry it's gotta be like this. I apologize. But, uh, Birdcage can pop this turn. Actually, no, no, no. We'll just prolong it. We'll prolong Birdcage with Kid. We'll rest these guys. Everything will say perma-frozen. We cannot attack with Diamante here, because I cannot give him a, uh, a Dawn. Because he won't restand. So let's go AK to face. Okay. All right. We'll go six again. Nice. Okay. Now keep in mind, though, since Sugar is rested, her effect will still keep going off regardless if she's rested or not. So some people do forget about this. Some people don't know about it. I'm gonna try to point it out in most of my, you know, uh, Birdcage videos or Dofi videos. She's always active. Okay. Even if rested. So we got an ohm coming down. Not sure if that was the play here. Maybe the ohm could search out for a, a holy and at least have the 1k counter. So we'll rest the uh, the ohm there. Yamato can't attack, so that was a little bit silly for him to do that. Did we chain another Doflamingo down here? Is that the game plan? Because I think we can just go for game. I might be a little greedy considering all the Dawn that's active over there in case they're running like Eldor or something of that nature. So we're going to take it safe. Go AK to face for a long bird cage again. Okay. This should be game, but either way, we're going to dive into at least one more after this one. And I'll show you some of the... Uh, 
the iterations of the deck and some of the things that I've changed at the end of the video. Nice, well played, homie. I'll see you later, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Diving into our very last game of the day. I do hope you guys stuck around and enjoyed it. This was a very long video. I apologize. I wanted to give you guys as much as my thoughts and opinions as I possibly could when it came to Birdcage Dofi. If you guys have been following me for a very long time, you know that uh, this is my favorite leader in you know, all of One Piece, just one of my favorite characters in all the series. So, generally speaking, having the opportunity of playing a deck for Doflamingo is a lot of fun for me. So, I'm not going to give up on it. This is why I've been playing with Birdcage, playing with this leader for a while, to give you guys something that's interesting and a lot more fun than seeing like Sakazuki and Mel and Katakuri all over the place, which has been copy pasted everywhere. You know what I mean? So, I do appreciate you guys for sticking around with me. This will be my last iteration of it for today. I am trying to come up with a build for Doflamingo that includes the uh, new Zoro. But uh, we'll get into that. We'll talk more a little bit about that at the end of the video here. But anyway, you guys do see that Uther over there, right? So, we took out the laws. Okay, there's no more laws in the deck, and I'm not going to put laws back in the deck. Nice. We got a birdcage here as well. Right on curve. This is lovely. Let's get a five in, and then we'll drop cage. Um, We took out the laws entirely. I don't feel law is great in OP06. Now, previously, yes. But now, considering you guys are playing into, like I said, Perona, Amoria, and Sakazuki is still here for the time being, all of those decks there, and Reju, by the way, all of these decks, they thrive on using their trash as another resource. So essentially, you're just giving them more resources than what you shouldn't, you necessarily don't want to do. You're allowing them to draw from another deck, essentially. So, I wanted to swap out Law with something else that could be reliable. So, Queen, Uta, are my other options that I was looking at. And we settled to do Uta. Because in this metagame here, especially versus decks like this, hmm, we'll take it. Especially playing against decks like this, Uta really allows you to slow them down because a lot of their units are under 7 drop. So, Uta has a very huge value into like a matchup like this. She also has a good matchup into Gekko Moria and Perona and a lot of the other decks in the format, be it yellow decks as well, because a lot of their a lot of their cards are, are four or five or less, sorry. That way she can rest them. Which is nice. Because then they'll have to use like I think it's called Impact, I believe, the yellow the yellow uh event. Thunderbolt, Gadetsu and there's there's one more card for removal that yellow has. I forgot on top of my head. But I think Uta is going to have a much better time in this metagame than before. Personally. Because we're going to see less uh, Hound Blazes. So. But we'll see. Either way though. This match here is very challenging. Especially if you don't see your pieces. I guess it goes both ways, right? But if you see Birdcage. Generally. We, we might have the W, but we'll see. This is still going to be a tough game, considering Judge is the thing, and he's pretty spooky. But we did have to take that hit. But we didn't have to, but I, you know, I'd rather take the hit. And now we'll play on the defensive foot and clear her board for the rest of the game here. That's what at least I'm going to try to do. And we get a Hody Jones, so this should be pretty solid here. We will make sure we extend Birdcage indefinitely for the rest of this game. But I have to do this in a way where I can have blockers down to protect myself. We're at 8 Dawn. I want to clear this guy if I'm able to. 4. Okay. So she has 7 Dawn active right now. Or 7 Dawn at this moment in time. They did throw away Judge last turn. So that either gives me the suspicion they have one in hand or they just didn't need it at the moment. Is it worth throwing down double Uthas though? And just doing a sugar instead. If we do sugar, 
if Reiju wants to throw something down on board the following turn, we can rest that as well. Or we can rest the 7 drop here if she decides to guard out. Okay. I like that. Gum Gum Jet Gatling is pretty solid here. Let's do 7 again. Let me get that hand. Appreciate it. We'll rest. We'll rest the 7 drop, okay? I figured she would have played down the one with the blue hair, right? And, okay, so she did get the Niju. Yep, so Niju hits the board. And it's probably better that she does not put the sugar back to my hand instead of just trying to kill the sugar. So that was a pretty well good idea there. Unfortunately, we're going to block out. And we're going to rest this. And we probably should let her go. So I can make it go up to 7. I can make it go up to 9 here. But we'll just let it go. It must have been the Dawn problem. We'll go 9k into this. We'll minus the Dawn from Bird. This should go, I'd imagine. Wow, you had another one of them. Okay. Didn't really want to do this, but fair enough. We'll pass it up. This will push us back up to four active. Unfortunately, we don't have another event in hand to play off of that. That's ironic. She discarded the, the two drop, got the four. So technically speaking, she could play the four down and we would just rest it anyway with sugar. So it's probably smart for her to attack into the sugar here. Because now she can't do anything. That has to be her only play. But then she'll just get blocked out by the Uta. Okay. 8k. Mm. Of course we have to guard it, but... Actually, let's drop a, a flap thread. So push us up to 8k, therefore she can't attack with the leader. And then I guess we'll just discard the Diamante here. So now the leader can't swing into me at least. They can still swing into the sugar. Which at this point is totally fine with me. Because we need the Uta on board. Oh, that's nice. Let's go, boys. I'm so sorry I gotta do this to you. I apologize. Drop down a kid. Taps the Dawn as usual. Five here. All right, so we'll go AK to face. Minus the Dawn for the Birdcage. Now, we know that she does have the blocker in hand, right? We know that much. I don't know what the other two cards are. But... If she plays down the blocker, we can just rest it. Okay. She got a Reju. Fair. Does she have one in trash, though? Okay, so she doesn't have one in trash. Nine the kid. Hmm. Is it worth guarding this, or should we just let it go? We could Hell's Judgment. We don't get a lot of value out of it. And just in case she does have like a uh, the seven drop ready to go in hands, let's go ahead and guard with the Utha. So we keep the kid on board. Oh, she had one of those in hand. All right, fair. You got it. And a Yanji. So now, this is where we're going to drop the Hody Jones, right? And then just perm rest these guys as well. We don't have to take a life because we don't have one, which is awesome. Attached on to Kid. And uh, I think this should be a good game. Unless she has another Gum Gum in hand. And then we'll hold up the two Dawn that we have here, just in case she gets out of this at these attacks. I don't think she can. Yeah, no, we're good. We got it. It was a really, really good game. 
to be fair. Let's just go. I don't want to get baited out though in case it's a 2 2 case. So let's go 9. Yep. Well played. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate everybody who decided to make it to the very end of the video. For those of you guys that skipped all the way to the end, you know, shame on you. But it is what it is. I appreciate you guys for coming in and watching my content for a little bit, even if you didn't stick around to the whole thing. But those that did, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I've been cranking out these videos as much as I possibly can when it comes to all things One Piece here on the channel. It seems a lot of people do like my bird cage list. My bird cage lists, let alone Doflamingo. I'm trying to give you guys a bunch of variety instead of doing the same old leaders that we've seen for a long time. And Nell, oh sorry, and Nell, Katakuri, you know, and then Sakazuki. I'm sure everybody is tired of those three decks. So when it comes to this channel, I try to do things that are a little bit off meta, some on meta, but a little bit of spicy variants or takes on certain builds. Such as, this is why we have Doflamingo here. So, appreciate everyone for sticking around and, and tuning in with me and uh, doing some theory crafts and all that sort of thing. Without further ado, welcome to the end of the video where we talk about a couple changes and stuff I'm going to be making to the deck list and what I'm going to be doing here today. So, for those of you guys that don't know, this is the list that we've been playing with as of late since OPO6 has, has come out. I have another variant in which I'm excited to share with you and that was from our last match, I believe. That that build setup is probably my favorite when it comes to the current ones in OPO6. But in any case, we're going to talk about it here real fast, then we'll move on with the deck. So Law, this is a very key card I want to talk about real quick. There's a lot of decks in this format, more so than last format with Sakazuki. Sakazuki is one of those cards where you can just discard one draw, right, essentially. So in other words, he was drawing from his trash, drawing from the deck. He was playing with two resources. In OPO6, right, there are two other decks that allow, three other decks, sorry, that allow you to do that. Corona, because she also gets cards back from the trash with Rebecca. She has the same, the same kind of synergistic feel to it, just not as fluent as Sakazuki. The other one, though, is Moria. Moria can get cards back from the trash, with his leader ability, which is just, it's not, it's not, I don't think he's broken at all. I really like this deck. I think it's a lot of fun. It's not as, feels bad as Sakazuki, you know what I mean? But you're still diving into the trash and your deck, so you're drawing from two different resources as well. The third deck, that's probably going to surprise a little bit of people, but you probably sure already think about this, is Reiju. Reiju is another deck that, again, draws from the trash, essentially, and her main deck. So cards such as Law here, I feel personally, lose a little bit more value. Like I said, in OPO5, he was pretty good. Unless you run into Sakazuki, right? At the end of the day. But, you know, he's pretty good. With OPO6 here, that's four decks you have to consider when you're running this card. Now, against every other matchup currently right now, into yellow and all that sort of thing, he's pretty good, right? Because you're throwing away Big Moms, you're throwing away 8-drop uh, uh, Katakuri, 7-drop Anels. You're hitting some really good cards. But, I try to be very consistent when it comes to the builds that I do. And I know, give or take, these are my opinions, so everyone else is going to have their own spin on this list or spin on what I say, you know what I mean? I'm going to take out Law. And we're going to change it up a little bit so the cards in which i've considered to replace here in this list trouble law and billion fold i like this card i do i think it's really good but it's not searchable with my baby fives okay so often not i'm just bottom decking this unless i have one early game in hand now you can argue the fact that well don't you bottom deck like hell's judgment or like colors trap um, weakness is a sin. Don't you, don't you bottom deck these two when you're searching? You do. That is true. But the thing about this is, if we remove this, this gives us a lot more space for other cards that can also give you a little bit more benefits for the rest of your deck. Such as, if I decided to throw in Hell's Judgments, Hell's Judgments does a lot of things for the deck. It minuses a Dawn. It extends Birdcage for, for one. 
and then it protects your kid or it protects this kid as well because these are going to be key pieces and it minuses your opponents two of your cards by 3000 power which is very very good now there's plenty of options when it comes to purple cards that are going to be very, very solid in this deck. You guys have seen me explore Colors Trap. I've explored Hellish Judgment. I've explored everything you can think about here when it comes to things from OP05. All right, pretty much everything. Now, I'm going to show you what I've cooked up for the for, for my last list when we played against the Regu. Again, we have so many different birdcage variations here. So hopefully we click the right one, unfortunately. All right, we did. So this is the list I'm currently cooking up right now for OPO6. This is probably my, I don't want to say my final list, of course, but this is one of my lists that I'm, I'm very, very like high praised on. If that makes sense, I'm very happy with this list. I brought back Uta. Uta is going to be a stay, a staple here when it comes to OPO6, at least for me. And the reason being is Sakazuki is going to be played less. Let's be, let's be real. People are going to be hopping on newer decks in OPO6. They're going to be exploring newer formats, newer cards, and all that sort of thing. So that means cards such as Houndblaze, we're going to see a lot less of, right? And then on top of that, sorry, go back to blue, my bad. Cards such as Borsalino, we're going to see a lot less of. Now this might make an appearance in some Crocodile decks, right? Because Crocodile is going to be very, very strong here, I believe, personally. Because, you know, Borsalino, you got Raging Tiger... The whole thing, the Sanji, it's very, very good. But that's a whole other animal. We're just talking about Sakazuki, for instance. We're going to see less of Hound Blazes. So, Great Eruption into a Hound Blaze, bottom deck your Uta, right? It's just, it's tragic, but it's always going to happen. And with less Hound Blaze, this means this card can stay on board a little bit longer. Now, we do have other decks we have to worry about when it comes to the Moria and the Corona. And we'll do a, a quick breakdown real quick. So for instance, Perona, right, she can rest you with her leader effect, okay? So now you're now you're rested. So in other words, you can't block that turn, right? And then she can follow that up by dropping a X Drake on you. Which might sound terrible. But in hindsight, that's pretty darn good. That's one X less X Drake you have to consider. That's gonna pop your kids, or it's gonna pop your Doflamingos. Let's be honest. Because these, these cards here, your big bodies, are keys to winning most of these matches or prolonging Birdcage. If she's going to go about dropping x rakes on these, that's one less x rake you have to worry about to you know remove some of your bigger pieces, which is nice. Now, some of these lists do run uh, Rob Lucci, which is fine, but it's not as consistent as Sakazuki because you're not worried about Houndblaze anymore. So in this regard, it's generally an Ice Age into a Rob Lucci, which most of the time will pop like one unit. Like, most of the time. Now, with Gecko Moria, though, the 9-drop, this is, or 8-drop, sorry, this is a little bit more scary because most Peronas and Gecko Moria lists will be running this card. So you have to consider Gecko Moria into a Helmeppo, into a Rob Lucci, or Gecko Moria on top of a, a Suru, and then Gecko Moria's effect can activate and pull you back a Helmeppo and a Rob Lucci, and you're, and you're popping bodies on board. But keep in mind, that is when they are at 10 Dawn. You see what I'm saying? Whereas Rob Lu or whereas Sakazuki was doing that very, very early into the game. You see what I mean? So you have an opportunity of getting cards on board and staying around for a little bit longer of a time than you did versus Sakazuki. Moria is kind of kind of similar but he's not as explosive all right he does have some very very good removal tools i'll give you that they both do they're just not as quick about it as sakazuki is so i've come to put back uta into the deck considering this can stay on board longer it has a lot more value it always will allow you to extend birdcage on a block even though if they kill it minusing one dawn will allow you to extend this for so much longer of a time at least until you can find a kid or just maybe one more turn longer to do your thing now the other card that's been included here is of course hell's judgment it's it's an up and down for me i really like the card and when i say up and down it's a toss-up so sometimes i'll i'll go two hell's judgments sometimes and then the other times i will take two spider webs 
Like these are generally like my ideal scenario right now for OP06 when it comes to this build. But that's about it for, for now. We will be diving into another list here in the future. I'm trying to cook up something with the brand new Zoro in which I do think that we can actually get him to work in Birdcage and do just fine. I just have to do a little bit more tinkering and tweaking things around and see what I can do here. I have a scenario in which I want to use with Zoro and, um, what's it, uh, not Hell's Judgment, but, um, the other purple card. Let's see here. Blast Breath. So, in other words, generally speaking, at the end of your turn, you have two Dawn active with your Zoro. So, in this regard, I want to try to have three Dawn active with Zoro, or sorry, with Zoro as well. So, we'll have one for Blast Breath and then two Dawn for either, like, Hell's Judgment, Flap Thread, or, or Spider Web, right? And, but how do we do that consistently? How do we do that? There's a card here called, in case you guys don't know, we don't see this that often. Dillinger is pretty solid. He is. He allows you to set up one of your Dons as active at the end of your turn. He doesn't. You don't have to attack with him. He doesn't. Doesn't matter if he's rested. As long as he's on the board, you will set up a Don, which is pretty good. Um, Mach Vice does the same thing at the end of your turns. But like I said, I'm going to explore some other options here when it comes to Zoro and see what I can cook up. Otherwise, this has been paused, please. I'm sorry for the long video. I apologize. I'm already feeling like I'm losing my voice. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys for sticking around. Make sure you hit that like button. Helps me out a ton getting this video, you know, out there in the wild. And I will catch you guys in the very next video. And I will see you guys at Locals. Have a good one.